I really wish when I started trading that I knew about the four step trading rules and this is rules that basically every trader should be doing when they come to the charts. I can't tell you how important this is whether you're a beginner or advanced trader to be applying these rules. Now it is a basic concept but a lot of people have been asking for it in my last video so I'm going to make this dedicated video on the four step rule trading and this is going to be what you should do when you come to the charts and what is the four step rule so definitely stick around watch this video it's going to be a good and helpful one and yeah let's get straight into it welcome back youtube harry here known as straight shop and as i was saying earlier this was a highly requested video to do four step trading as per my last video and yeah we're just going to go into basically each part of it and lay out the four steps and talk a bit about it and i will leave the detailed videos for each basically step above on the cards when we go into each step basically but yeah before we start and always guys can you please support the youtube algorithm and if you'd like to support me in a free and easy way I would be really greatly appreciated if you could like and subscribe to this channel if you're new because there's plenty of content on here, plenty of education and it saves you from paying crazy amount of money for courses that don't help and that's always been my goal so just leaving a like and subscribing really does help and your comments I love to read them and I always look at them and if you have any questions you can join the discord or something below and you can ask me and I will answer them. So yeah, let's get into four step trading and uh, lay out the different steps. So guys, the four steps when you come to the chart should be boom here. You should have your daily bias, your market structure, your trading zones, and then it comes down to your entry. So we're going to go over all of these. It's going to be nice, quick, easy and something simple for you guys to understand. So number one being your daily bias. When you come to the chart, you have to understand what is the most likely direction that we're going to go during that day. And how you're going to gather this information is you're going to do top-down analysis. Now, I'm going to link that video up there to go in more depth about doing top-down analysis. But you have to have this when you come to the charts. And this is how you're going to be able to be profitable in trading, following this routine, following this plan, and having this approach towards the market. So, we start from the daily time frame. You should know where you are on the weekly time frame, right? So, the weekly time frame... Obviously, this week is closing bearish, but last week closed doji, right? So you can say, all right, weekly candle is bearish. So let's take it for next week, right? This is pound yen here. Let's have a look at what we'd be looking at. So weekly candle is bearish. There's a possibility, but we have a long rejection here respecting the support. So we could have a wick fill here, but that's not going to make sense until we see that on lower time frame. So we have to keep in mind that daily uh, weekly is bearish, so we might have some bearish pressure next week. But when we go to the daily candle here, we see two, three daily candles closing bullish, one closing in a range here. So we know, all right, if the daily candles are closing bullish, uh, bullish we can expect that price should continue up if we're breaking above the highs. But since the weekly candle is bearish, we can be looking for sales if we see any bearish pressure on lower time frames, right? Because this is how we know our bias, right? So for me, the bias would be very simple here. Coming into four hour time frame, we can see here it's a very simple bias. I'm obviously more bullish than bearish based on the daily time frames closing bullish. But if I was to see a four hour candle close below here based on the weekly time frame, I could see some bearish pressure. Now that's more of a complicated example because we're kind of in the middle, but that's a good example for you guys to understand how you can have a bias. So the bias is obviously looking for more buys based on the bullish pressure of the dailies. But remember the weekly is bearish. So if we get any four hours breaking, especially below the daily low, we can be looking for sells, right? So an easier example, I mean, if we went to an example, something like this, where we see a bullish closure, something, you know, at the bottom of the range here we know we're bullish weekly candle would have closed bullish and we can say fine we can look for price to tap this resistance here my bias is bullish so we should be looking for if your bias is bullish you should be looking for buys similar situation here as well if you see this daily candle close below this area here you can be my bias for today is bearish why because we're closing a bearish candle below support so I expect price to continue down and that day you should be looking for sells. So that's the first thing. So now that we're looking for buys, because that's our daily bias, you have to look at the market structure. And this is going to help you with your bias, right? So if you're looking for buys, we have to be in bullish market structure, right? So that all starts from the four hour. What is the four hour printing? Well, we have a low here, a higher low here. And it looks like we're trying to form some support here. So if we're forming support here, as long as this support here is being respected, our market structure remains bullish and we should continue up. 
where does the idea become wrong when we start closing below this support here right which is also when your bias flips so when we're respecting market structure we should expect upside now going on the one hour time frame here we can see we're on a range this is a terrible 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 example here because this is like we're basically in a range but if we were to take an example somewhere here and we're like all right market structure has been bullish here on the one hour time frame my daily bias is bullish remember we're looking for buys i should be looking for support to continue up bullish right so we know that as long as this is respected market structure remains bullish because this is our last significant higher low and i'll also link the video for market structure in depth above there and that means we should expect price to continue up bullish right so that is the next step is that look at the market structure if we have bearish market structure and this is where i'm going to help you if it's bearish market structure but the daily bias is bullish right so we might see this type of uh, action here understand where your last, last significant higher low is so your last significant higher low is here because that's your last structure so even though we have this bearish momentum we're still going to be looking for buys based on this respecting our overall market structure right so market structure is bullish this is a good setup for buys now the next step we have to look at is where's going to be our trading zone right so this is very very important here so for me when you come on the chart you have to find your trading zones here so obviously buys will be good above this zone because we have a low traffic area which i'll also link how to gather your trading zones i'll actually link the full guide to trading price action and that covers finding your trading zone so you guys have to have a plan where do you want to look for trade so personally for me if i see any support form above this area here i'll be looking for buys this whole area here is my trading zone but my immediate trading zone is gonna be here when i see candle closures above here so we see what happens not interested not really interested with that closure let's see what we're getting here on 15 minute time frame yeah not really interested at how price is moving now i would like to see some sort of strong closure so yeah see this is coming now towards our trading zone here this is starting to look good for taking buys now right so because we're creating some support here so let's see what happens boom coming for a nice retest oh as i said waiting for this is my trading zone clean candles waiting for a closure above that zone is this the candle yep that's the candle to close so that's our entry candle so i'm going to enter here stop loss going to go below this range here target the top of the range because this was my trading zone i marked up the reason why we're bullish but this is our resistance here we have clean candle here that we should be able to fill this is our a clean trading zone so this is your marked up trading zone so we should be able to continue continue up bullish we wait for the candle to close and then we get some pullback no problem no problem no problem and eventually it should hit our take profit and there we go take profit hit so that's basically the trade very very simple now which has kind of answered the question and i'll go over one more example to be honest for trading zone is let's go and find a nice example for a trading zone here so let's close this yes this will be a good area to find your trading zone so if we're bullish on today all right so let's see where's a good area to find a trading zone yeah for sales so let's take a bearish example because we're always talking about buys so let's talk about sales say we came to the charts at let's see on the 30 minute yeah let's say we came to the charts at this point here right so to make this example nice and clean say we came to the charts here well all right we're trending bearish now my trading zone is going to be any closures below here should give me the option to test this resistance here because of the clean candle and the clean move here. But if we're bearish and these highs are being respected, you can see the highs being respected. This is also an option for your trading zone here. If price is closing bearish, creating another lower high, you can also be looking for sells, right? So that can be your other option here for a trading zone. So you know your trading zone is going to be within here this is your trading zone one looking to come and test this and your trading zone two is going to be any closures below here so let's see how that plays out so here's your bearish closure you can take the sell now and expect price to come and tap that resistance right so remember this is your trading zone one so you're looking for price to tap this so what happens you come and price fills trading zone one complete right 
so now you have to wait for closures below this zone here so this is trading zone two so you know all right any candles closing below here will give me the next option so no candles closures yet you can see how it's respecting trading zone one we get a closure still respecting trading zone one that's why we're waiting for the close below and now boom we get a huge close below trading zone two it actually taps support here so i mean you would have to go on lower time frame to probably find that just push through that's too bad you'll have you know you should have been in the entry earlier to be able to catch that but that's the next zone you're looking to trade unfortunately it just pushed straight through and we had heavy downside movement that day as you can see but you can see how the zone was you know got reaction pushed up and this is the zones you have to mark out and this is a good example to be honest because your zones price might just push through but that that's how it works right you'll have to wait for pullbacks look to enter on pullbacks and try catch price right so you can see your next zone is this zone anything closing below here should be coming to here and you can see that price boom shoot straight through it that was a heavy day i remember that day so very very simple here and the last thing and to wrap this video up is going to be your entry time frames which we sort of covered so oops i removed it so the last thing is going to be your entry time frame and i'm, I'm going to put the detailed video of how to use different time frames for entry but what you're going to do is based on your analysis where you find your trading zone for example say we're looking for buys here we're on the one hour time frame and that is going to be our entry time frame so let's say we only want to take buys when we see a one hour bullish closure above or below our range so we know that any closure above this range here could be an option for an entry time frame so we that's what we're looking for so we say i want a one hour closure now this will improve with time and you can watch that detailed video but you have to try be able to trade the one hour before you could trade the 30 minute before you can trade the 15 minutes so once you start saying okay fine we know price is bullish this is a one hour bullish close this is my entry time frame this is what i'm waiting for you don't enter off the five minute no your entry time frame was the one hour that's your confirmation right then when you get better you can say okay how could i have, have entered on the five minute right so if we go back and we have a look at the five minute now we can say where's a good entry on the five minute well the best entry on the five minute is going to be this here why is this going to be your best entry because we have a 15 minute bullet bullish closure because you guys should be able to count that 5 10 15 so that two candles have made the 15 minute bullish after the 15 minute opened it created a bearish candle for five minutes then created the next bullish candle engulfing the bearish candle showing that it's respecting support so an entry above there is very sen sensible to be able to go and test the highs right so that's how you use a five minute but you have to have your entry time frame. So for me, I always have a confirmation time frame. So I'm not going to take an entry based on a five minute bullish closure, because if you took an entry based on this five minute bullish closure, you lose. You took an entry of this five minute bullish closure, you lose. So you have to understand where you are in the market. So we obviously got a deep pullback here. So here's your deep pullback. And you can see how that's after a 15 minute bullish close, as, as I explained. And you can see where are we pulling back to? Very, very important. I'm looking for pullbacks back to this breakout point here, right? Why should I be taking buys at the high here at resistance? You can see there's a resistance here. Taking buys there is not going to be smart. But you know that we're in bullish structure. So any pullbacks should be just pullbacks. So we see the pullback come in. You see the support being created here. And that is your entry confirmation to be able to take an entry. Your target's going to be the top of the range. Boom, take, take profit. Very simple, clean trade. That's a one to five trade right there. So that's how it's going to work. That's how you're going to select your entry timeframes here. And uh, yeah, with that being said, guys, take care, trade sharp. Hope this video helped. Let me know. And yeah, until next time. Peace.